There are a number of avenues of research that are being pursued uh, in terms of ALS at this point. Um, the ma majority of the research focuses on two areas. One is trying to determine what the cause of the disease is, and the other area is to uh, establish uh, treatments that will alter the course of the disease or slow down the course of the disease. Um, in terms of the causes or the etiology of the disease, there's been a tremendous amount of progress made in the last two years. Um, and this is largely focused around the identification of a particular protein that has been found to be abnormal in the vast majority of cases of ALS. This is a protein that uh, carries the name of TDP43. And this is a very interesting protein in the sense that it is also a protein that's abnormal in a disorder called frontal temporal dementia. And in fact, uh, it's, there's long been known an association between these two disorders and that in some cases they actually overlap in the same patient. And um, this uh, finding of this unusual protein has been quite a uh, boon in terms of uh, 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 stepping forward and finding uh, uh, the, the core causes of the disease. Uh, and to the point where there's some people who now believe that um, this frontal temporal dementia and the motor neuron disease are just variations of the same disorder. And this has led to a tremendous amount of research behind the uh, cause of this protein and how it accumulates and why it causes the disease. But this is probably the, the biggest step forward in the research of ALS since the identification of the SOD mutations in the familial forms of ALS. Um, and then the second line of uh, research that's been followed is the identification of additional treatments. Um, uh, unfortunately, we have not had the same degree of success at this point, um, but, the, but just identifying specific causes is going to be very helpful for us to be able to target the therapies down the road. Um, previously, we were uh, doing, we were developing new treatments or trying new treatments. It was largely um, just um, picking a drug and hoping that it had some biological effect without really knowing what it did, uh, and, and that has not been very successful. Um, and so our treatments are going to be much uh, better targeted in the future. And of course, the other area that everyone has got excited about the, is the onset of stem cell research uh, in ALS. Um, and while it's not being done in humans at this point in the United States, um, I know of a number of groups that are trying to get uh, human programs and human research programs off the ground to try and study stem cells in humans. And there's a couple of strategies with using stem cells. One is to try and use the stem cells to actually replace the neurons that are dying. <coughs> excuse me, the motor neurons that are dying. And uh, there's a huge number of hurdles to try and accomplish that. That makes it somewhat impractical, at least today. The biggest of which is you got to get these neurons into the, into the nervous system, and then their axons, or their process, have to grow out and provide innervation to the muscle. But also it has to make the appropriate connections in the spinal cord. Uh, and uh, as you, you can imagine, it's a very complicated and complex circuitry that occurs, and to get the neurons into the right spot, into the right connections, is very, very difficult. So the other strategy that most people are looking at is trying to change the environment that the neurons are living in. So if we add the stem cells to the, uh, to the neural system, to the spinal cord of the brain, that these, cells, these stem cells will be presumably function, will mature and functionally function as normal support structures for the neurons and it will somehow alter the environment so that it's not to that, so that it reduces the toxicity of the environment so that the motor neurons don't don't die <coughs> and increasingly this environment that these neurons are living in are recognized to be quite important um, we know for example that in the right setting, if the neurons are not in this toxic environment, even if the neurons are affected by the, for example, the genetic mutation, the neurons don't die. That the environment itself can be very supportive and can, can slow down the death of these neurons or even stop the death of the neurons. And that's kind of the biggest hope at the moment is that we can change the molecular environment that these cells are residing in to stop their death. And so I think it's, it's still a ways away that we'll ever be able to replace more neurons but I think it's a very realistic goal that we can stop their stop the disease from progressing by stopping their death um, through these uh, supports by, by, by providing these support neurons. We are one of the centers that are initiating uh, a, stem, a stem cell research project. Right now it's being done in animals only. Okay. Um, we are, do have protocols before the FDA and are in discussions with the FDA to try and move them into humans. Um, but uh, as anyone who's worked with the FDA or knows the FDA, there's a great deal of safety things that we have to um, be certain of before we can try them in people. But I will say that we have learned more about this disease in the past 15 years 
than we had learned about it in the past, the prior 150. I mean, up until 15 years ago, we were still talking about um, uh, accidents and trauma and electrical injuries and you know, soil, heavy metals in soil, and things, epidemiological factors that really probably have little, if anything, to do with the disease. And we finally made it to the point where we are very, very close to understanding the molecular mechanism of why this happens. And to be honest with you, until we understand why this disease happens, our ability to intervene and stop it is going to be very low. And so I really think once that is worked out, then, then we will lead to meaningful treatments and, and disease-modifying therapies that offer more than just two or three months of survival and hopefully eventually stop the disease altogether.